and I'm, I'm going to teach you how to derive this today, uh, is the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And so this is the Taylor, okay? And what I'm stressing is centered at 0, okay? The Maclaurin there And I'm sorry, I had it the other way around. <laughs> uh, the Maclaurin is centered at zero. That's the one I like. Uh, the Taylor series is centered at A. So you see, uh, in my opinion, there's not much reason to talk about both of them. If you if you can do something with a particular function, you can do the same thing with that function shifted left or right. Right? I don't I don't know if you if you agree <laughs> agree with me here, but that's that's what I'm emphasizing. I'm emphasizing centered at zero. Um, if you look at page, yes, you, you understand what I'm saying, you, you, you agree, no big deal if I shift the function left or right, the slopes are going to stay the same, the area is going to stay the same. Um, if I look at page uh, 613, is that right? Yes, yeah, 613. There's a nice table here that we want to know at least uh, the first six elements on. Um, so, uh, and they're all written as Maclaurin, okay? They're all written as Maclaurin. It's hard to believe that the first one is a Maclaurin and the, uh, the LN is a Maclaurin, but you're looking at, is there a shift in the X's in the series? Or is it just, right? Is it just an X term or is it an X minus A term? So all of them are Maclaurin series. We're not doing the last one. And look at my radius of, of uh, can you see that page up here? It's, it's hard maybe to see, but you can see it gives me my radius as well. So look at the inverse tan, it's radius of one. But the e to the x, sine x, cos x, infinite radius, right? Of course, there's not much use to something that has a radius of zero. Right? It's always going to just be the first term anyway. So, <clears throat> say again. I said, um, you, if you see here, all of these have a radius of 1 or an infinite radius. There's not much use to a series that has a, a radius of 0. It's only good for the first term. Right? So, so it turns out that I mean, look at these things that are used all the time, have a radius of 1 or an infinite radius. Not th nothing that's, you know, a, a typical function is going to show up with a radius of 0. Say again. It's 6, 13. So looking at my Maclaurin, and we're going to figure out how this comes about, looking at Maclaurin for e to the x, I certainly can write out e to the x as a bunch of terms, right? Uh, what's my first term? 1? Well, let's, let's not cheat it, right? x to the 0 over 0 factorial plus x to the 1 over 1 factorial plus x squared. I just started, Teddy. Didn't miss anything. Just talking about Maclaurin series and Taylor series. You can see the Maclaurin doesn't have a shift left or right in it, the Taylor does, right? So this is the Maclaurin series for e to the x, right? And I'm going to simplify that. I get a 1 plus x plus x over 2 plus x cubed, sorry, x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6. And, and so look at what I can do with this, right? Plus dot, 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 right? But if I plug the value of 1 in to all my x's, uh, 
and then I go to my I, 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 I go to my calculator and see how close this is. What do we know about E? About 2.7 2.718. And I've got here what? Uh, don't tell me. Uh, 6 over 6 plus 6 over 6 plus 3 over 6 plus 1 over 6. 12, 15, 16 over 6. And 16 over 6 is 2.67. So pretty close with just four terms, right? Well, what's the next term? Yeah, so it's 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 one over. I just had a three factorial, then I have a four factorial. Four times three times two is twenty-four, right? So let's see if we if we kept going, and then one more. Five factorial, one twenty, right? You agree? Five times twenty-four, five times four factorial, so two point six seven plus 1 over 24 plus 1 over 120 2.72 <laughs> at six terms at six terms it's on so so what's that uh th there's a, there's actually uh the original way was not this how they calculated it um, it was a, a limit, though. It was done in a, with a limit. Um, so, and by Euler. That's why it's named E. Leonard, Leonard Euler. Um, yeah, right. Say again? Yeah. Yeah. And and you know there's that whole is it Euler or or Euler? It's Euler, but we don't say Eulogy when we're saying a eulogy, <laughs> right? So anyway, so just after six terms, it's it's got me this thing to two decimal places, pretty sick, right? Um, but the same way, the same way that I did e to the 1, I could do e to the x squared, right? So if, again, e to the x is the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, then, then I can get any value or any function representation using this same idea, right? So if I wanted an x squared in there, I simply put the x squared in there, right? So now I have a representation in a series of e to the x squared of what? x to the 2n over n factorial. Whereas I cannot do this integral, but I can do this integral. Oops, sorry. So pretty crazy that once I get this uh, Taylor series representation of one of these main functions, I can get any representation of it as a sum of polynomials. And then of course they're easy to integrate. This is where this is what we've been working up to this whole time. So um, and so, so of course, so what, is, what, do, what do I have here? What does this one become? It's the series of what? Well, what do I do to my exponent? I add one to it and divide by my new exponent. And checking at zero is not a problem. Zero is not a problem. Obviously, one is not a problem, right? So I'm just checking term by term here mentally, right? But then I can evaluate 
this guy now by term by term, right? And I mean, I'll say, I'll ask for four terms, five terms, six terms, not, not much more than that. But what are my terms here? What's my first term? Uh, yeah, so n is zero, right? Oh, right? So that's a zero factorial. And that's just a one down there. So just x. Uh, my second term, when n is one, yes, x cubed over three, yes. So I'm instantly looking at this. I'm instantly looking at that right away, right? Because I want to see what happens in my next term. When n is 2, I definitely get an x to the fifth. Um, but I don't get a 5, right? I get 5 times, what, 2 factorial? So I, I'm instantly seeing this now, right? I'm instantly seeing, and, and of course, you knew I plugged in 0 factorial and 1 factorial. So that's pretty easy. But then I, after that, I don't need to look at the formula anymore, right? Next would be what? Plus x to the seventh over 3 factorial times 7, right? So after that point, I don't really need uh, the formula anymore. I can see the pattern. We're pretty damn good at seeing patterns. And so now I can evaluate this particular function quite easily with a certain number of terms. And like I was doing Simpson's rule, uh, so we'll eventually do a Simpson rule with this and then compare it to, with four partitions and compare it to four terms of the uh, Taylor series, right? And then of, of course, what do we want? The one that's better, right? So uh, we'll, we'll eventually do that probably tomorrow. Let's, uh, look at this radius of convergence. And so we're going to do that, of course, always with the uh, ratio test. Uh, so e to the x is the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. We want to look at this radius of convergence, right? So the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the m plus 1 over m plus 1 factorial divided by x to the n over n factorial. Make sure you're okay there. So the x to the n's go away, the n factorials go away, and I'm looking at the limit of 1 over m plus 1 times x. And of course that limit is 0, right? So if I'm going to get a radius bigger than zero, not a problem. Any radius will do. So let's take a look at e to the x. Don't let me rush, though. I'm just going to move the quizzes to, to uh, Wednesday and Thursday, okay? So quiz tomorrow on like an improper integral. Um, anything on the first test. And then the quiz on Thursday on uh, Chapter 7. Okay? So let's take a look.
Oops, Desmos. And we're graphing y equals e to the x. And then we're graphing, we're going to put a few terms in first. I had an x first, right? Uh, did I have x first? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then plus uh, x squared over 2. Uh, what's happening? Why is of oh thank you oh yeah <laughs> thank you look how look how nicely it just like right settles in plus x squared over six x cubed over six. And remember, we're, we're, we're trying to see that this thing is expanding past positive 1 and left of negative 1 and past uh, right of positive 1. Uh, what's my next term? x to the 4th over 24, right? All right, definitely made it past it, right? Almost to 1.5. So you see this thing is just going to keep expanding and, and covering the entire curve. Um, but certainly if I was evaluating at 1 right here, it would be pretty good, right? If I was evaluating at 1, looking at, at, at x is 1, 1 comma e, I mean, can you can you see? Where, where, oh, did I lose my? I, I, I overwrote it. There we go. Sorry. Ah. I want. I don't want to hit the X. I want to hit Enter, but my fingers are <laughs> uh, one comma E. You can't tell that it's on the blue or red or any different from one from one or the other. And what did I do? One, two, three, four, five. This is five terms. I did six terms and I got right 2.72. So um, what 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 was that last term? One over one twenty? One divided by one twenty. It's point zero 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 eight. So barely even contributing to it anyway. So five terms looks enough for me here. Um, of course, if I was evaluating at negative 2, it wouldn't be that accurate. But if I did more terms, it would, right? Yes. Be, yeah, because if you think about it, how much accuracy am I adding at 1 over 120, right? That, that very next term is x, over, x to the 5th uh, over 120. If my x is... Uh, um, less than one, it's it's adding almost nothing to it, right? Nice. Let's see how you make these guys. So uh, the whole idea is that. Um, we have a Maclaurin series is basically a power series. Um, you see sometimes it's skipping x terms, but the coefficients are quite different. So we want to, but we want to think about um, we want to think about 
how these series are made or how what they actually look like right it's just some coefficient times x to the n so f of x is the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n Uh, so f of x is actually uh, what c sub 0 x to the 0 plus c sub 1 x to the 1 right we, we've done this talked about this already what I want to do is try and figure out my coefficients I want to figure out my coefficients based around the center of the function which of course we know is 0 here right um, so um, so what can I do is I can uh, take derivatives and evaluate my derivatives to solve for C so um, Uh, for example, f of 0 is simply c sub 0, right? Everything else goes away, yes? Um, what is f prime of x? Well, the constant is uh, gone, right? Uh, but then I get 1 times c sub 1 times x plus 2 times c sub 2 times, uh, sorry, just c sub 1, right? x to the 1, derivative of x to the 1 is at 1, uh, plus 3 times c sub 3 x squared plus etc., right? And then what do I get for f prime of 0? Yeah, yeah. See, I could just get c sub one, right? Or, or, or and I'll I'll keep the one in there because you, we want to see the see kind of a pattern here. I don't quite know what the coefficient of this one is yet, or how it's represented, but I have a feeling it's going to be zero factorial. Uh, but I want to continue the process. What's my double second derivative? Well, the first term's gone now, but then I get two times c sub 2 plus uh, 3 times 2 times c sub 3 and you can see my factorials for me you can see 2 factorial 3 factorial 4 factorial so if I just solve this for c sub 2, right? If I say c sub 2 is f prime of, oh, uh, sorry, f double prime of 0 is 2 times c sub 2, right? So f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial is c sub 2. So you should be able to see that c sub n is f double prime uh, sorry, f nth prime of zero evaluated over n factorial. Um, certainly, we can see that f triple prime is uh, three factorial times c sub three. So again c sub 3 is f triple prime at 0 over 3 factorial, right? So you should see the pattern. It worked for 0, zero derivative, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative. So that's, that's my piece. So what I'm saying now, f of x is even better than uh, some coefficient times x to the n. I actually know it's the nth derivative at 0 over n factorial times x to the n.
this is now what we're going to call uh, our McLaurin series. An interesting question to have is does it work? Right? Does it work for my power series? I, I think that's definitely the, uh, uh, an interesting question there. Something for you to look at if you want to. Can I use this same formula to generate a power series for like my rational equation, right? Like if f of x is 1 over 1 minus x. And it's like, well, if the method we came up with is already so easy, <laughs> why, why introduce a more complicated method to get something that's easy? But I can't use this method to get e to the x. I can't turn e to the x into something that looks like this. But other functions, I can. Arctan, I can. Ln, I can. Rational functions, I can. Right? So, but it's still an interesting thought to have and something that, you know, um, it's something to, to, to investigate on that rainy afternoon when <laughs> plans are canceled and the power's out. <laughs> And your phone, you broke your phone. <laughs> All right, so let's just see how this thing generates for e to the x, right? So, um, so I want to just pretend I don't know the formula for e to the x, and let's see what happens. So e to the x has got to be the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of f to the nth prime evaluate at zero over n factorial times x to the n. And and we already know what's the nth what's the zero derivative of e to the x, e to the x. Evaluate at zero is one. What's the first derivative derivative of e to the x? E to the x. Evaluated at zero is one. Right? So we already know uh, for e to the x, f to the nth derivative of 0 is always 1. And that's pretty much all we needed, right? To get, to get exactly the, the uh, piece for e to the x. Let's work on uh, side, okay? We ready? So if f of x is sine of x, let's find the coefficients and uh, a representation in a, in a Maclaurin series, right? Find the Maclaurin series, M-A-C-L-A-U-R-I-N. I think the L is capital. Yeah, no? No? Thanks. So, we know it's going to come from some kind of version of n equals 0 to infinity of f nth derivative at 0 over n factorial um, x to the n. What's interesting is that when I evaluate sine at zero, I get zero, but when I evaluate its derivative, cosine at zero, I get one, right? So I know I'm gonna get some zeros and some plus or minus ones. And of course, I don't want the zero terms. What's the, what's the point? So I'm going to try and rewrite, after I figure out what's going on, I'm going to try and rewrite things, right? Um, so uh, I, can, I can start writing out 
terms of this and figuring out my coefficients and then write out what I have, delete what is nonsense, and then come up with the new series. So, uh, so uh, for n equals zero, what do I need? I need sine of zero over zero factorial times uh, x to the zero. So what do I get there? I get uh, zero times times one, right? So it's zero. So that first term is not going to have any value to me at all. What about when n is one? What do I get? Derivative of sine is cosine evaluated at zero over one factorial times x to the one. So I just get x to the one over one factorial. I want to keep that one factorial. I want to keep the information in there when, I do, when it doesn't drop out. Because I want, I'm going to see a pattern and I can stop thinking. Once I see the pattern, I don't have to think anymore. So when n is 2, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, but sine of, negative sine of 0 is still 0. So that term drops out. It looks like my even terms are going to drop out, right? Because I'm always going to get back to a sine, right, when I take my derivative there. Sine of 0, positive or negative, is going to go away. So I kind of think now I only have to do my odd terms. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a couple more terms anyway, just to be sure. So derivative of negative sine is negative cos. So it looks like I get the opposite of x cubed over 3 factorial. I think I see it already. I think I see it already. I don't think I, I know the next one's 0, and I know the next one's going to be x to the 5th over 5, right? We can see the pattern already. Exactly. So I've got uh, x to the 1 over 1 factorial minus x to the 3rd over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial. And I already know this guy. I know this guy. I know the series for odds, right? 2n minus 1, yes? So I think I have the whole thing. So sine of x equals the sum uh, from n equals 0 to infinity. My pattern for odds is 2n plus 1. If I start at 0, 2n plus 1. And my coefficient is going to be uh, negative 1 to the n. Yes, thank you. Uh, 2n plus 1 factorial, yes. 2n plus 1 quantity factorial, thank you. Again? Yeah, so let me let me remind you, uh, if the, my first odd is 1, my second odd is 3, my third odd is 5, right? I, I can already see a table there that's linear with a slope of 2, and I can figure out the B value, right, uh, by backing up 1 in the x direction and backing up 2 in the y direction. So 2n minus 1 uh, is a nice way to do it as, uh, but because I, why didn't I do that? Don't tell me. Uh, I, I, I didn't want my first term to be an x to the minus 1. So 2n plus 1 gives me odds Um, starting at zero. Yeah. Yeah. And to get, and this gives me odds if I start at one. 
and that's what I did. I started at one. But if I said my my null odd is one, my next odd is three, my next odd is five, then I get the two m plus one. Yep. Well, what's pretty cool is that I know what's the derivative of sine of x. Close, right? So I can get my, my derivative, I get my series from my derivative of this derivative of the, the series for sine. So let's take, let's take this series for sine. Right? There's my series for sine, but let's let's differentiate it. Right? Let's take the derivative of it. I could do it term by term, or I can just take the derivative, paying attention to my coefficients, right? Of I'm sorry, of the variables. I don't care about the coefficients, they're not going to change, right? So n equals zero of negative one to the n over two n plus one factorial times x to the 2n, right? Remember, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to bring that, sorry, I'm going to bring down my exponent, right? And subtract my exponent by 1. Right? When you take a derivative power rule, bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, right? And so then I'm going to rewrite my, um, my factorial, I'm going to peel off that first term of the factorial. And you can see those 2n plus 1's cancel. And, and notice what happens, right? Notice what happens. You can see the sine has odd powers. What do you know about the sine function? What kind of function is it? Odd. <laughs> and cosine is even, right? Sine is odd. Cosine is even. So it's nice. I can, I can, um, to get, once I have a function, I can differentiate it or integrate it to, uh, you know, to, to get a different function. Once I have the series for it, it's very easy. And you can kind of see the wrapping happening here um, in the textbook, but of course, it would be a good idea for you to take a sine or a cosine curve and, and, and start writing out the terms to, to, to show that it's right, kind of gluing to the graph as it's moving out and it, it goes all the way to infinity. Um, I think the cosine curve might be a little bit easier to deal with. It doesn't, I guess, it, no, it doesn't, no, it's not easier, it's the same, right? Um, but what, let's write out some terms here. Um, at, at zero, it's one, yes. So, and then it's going to be x squared over 2 factorial 
right? So I have an x zero, x to the zero on the first term, x squared on the second term, then x to the fourth, right? Over four factorial, yes? It's pretty easy to see the pattern once it gets going. But let's see how that wraps on our cosine curve. Yeah, everybody with me? So there's 1 plus, uh, minus what evens, right? x squared over 2 factorial. I think I can put the factorial in so I don't have to think about it. Yeah. So I don't have to think about it because <laughs> I'm a lazy man. Oh, that, that's nice. Look how nice that x squared over 2 factorial fits. And then um, plus x to the fourth. Oh, so cool. Already past one, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Past two, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. And so if you tell it you want this number of decimal places, look, so you say, say to your calculator, I want four decimal places, uh, there's a way to calculate how many terms you need from a Taylor or McLaurin series to get that accuracy. Yeah, it's, you're adding point, yeah, point zero zero. You're adding, I mean, if, it, if, if you want eight figures, <laughs> I don't know why, first of all, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah, those, that factorial is going so fast downstairs, yep. Nice. Um, let's take a look at a test of mine. I think I can do that. Ah, I don't want to do that. There's a way I can get the team somehow, I think. There it is. Oh, files maybe? Ah, let's look at the let's let's look at where are, oh there are my files. If it makes me log in, I'm there we go. One quick look and then I'm giving up, okay? There we go. 
final exam. And I'll, I'll, I'll print this out and send it to you or post it. Look at that. Look at that problem right there on the first one. Right? Recognize that problem? Number two <laughs> on the test. <laughs> Uh, it says, I want to find the Maclaurin series for that first. Um, here's a, it's a little bit bigger there, if you, Noah, if you need to see it. Then I want to uh, do integration by parts to find the exact value from 0 to 1, and then see how good the Maclaurin series gives me the estimate for that same integral, right, with six terms. You, fo you follow me? So this is... You can see this is one problem from chapter five, right? Um, then, so so McLaurin series chapter eight. Then I do integrate it for chapter uh, five, and then I use the McLaurin series to see how good it is. So so it's easy for me to test you again on chapter five without actually adding another question to the test. So meaning if you can do number two here, that means I don't care about your chapter exam one, number two. Right, you hear me? That's what I'm trying to do, is to make sure I ask you everything on that first test, on this next test, with the additional material, so I can say to you, you're forgiven. <laughs> I, I know you can do it now, right? All right, so here we go. We want to find the Maclaurin series for x squared e to the minus x dx. So f of x is x squared e to the minus x, right? Well, we have a representation for e to the x, which means we have a representation for e to the minus x. e to the x is the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, right? So you can see well, all I'm going to do is, is put in the negative x there. And it really is that simple. So I kept, kept trying to scare you that this section was very difficult, but if you can kind of accept and move forward with it, deriving things not that easy, but just being a good robot and eat your batteries should be easy for us, okay? So what do we get here? We get the sum of n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n, x to the n over n factorial. And remember, I wanna, I wanna think about signs, S-I-G-Ns, coefficients, one over n factorial, and x terms, x to the n. So now f of x can be written as x squared times that series. And again, I'm stressing here that my sigma notation is dependent upon n. So multiplying it by x squared is no big deal. It's, it's independent of n. So I, I can just move that piece in. And what do I get? X to the n plus 2 over n factorial. How is that? Is that okay? Be comfortable? Now, we know we're going to need six terms, right? We know we're going to need six terms. In question three, it says, hey, now, now estimate the integral, right? using uh, six terms. So I, I'm going to need six terms, maybe seven, because I have to integrate this, right? So, so maybe I'll wait on that. Let me wait on the, the terms. But anyway, I have the, the, the series representation of it, right?
do you want me to do the integral? So question two, actually find the integral from zero to one of x squared e to the x or, or minus x, or can I just cheat with um, Desmos? Do you want me to do the integral? Ryan, I'll do it. Yes, fine. Nice, no problem. So imp is it improper? No, it's not improper. So I would have to look for vertical asymptotes, right? Uh, or limits at infinity, and I don't, I don't have either of those. I certainly can draw the picture of x squared e to the minus x, right? I can draw that graph and make sure. Uh, but I know I just went from zero to one. It doesn't look like much trouble, so I'm going to use the, my tic-tac-toe here, right? So I know u is x squared, and I know v is minus e to the minus x. Uh, so every term is negative, so I'm going to factor out the negative, and then I'm going to have an x squared plus 2x plus 2 evaluated at 1 and 0. Is this okay? Don't let me, don't let me shortcut it too much if, you, if you're, you're not following me. So when I evaluate at 1, what do I get? Minus uh, 1 over e. Sorry, 5 over e. And when I evaluate at 0, I get uh, 2. Am I right? Uh, yeah, but evaluated zero, it switches signs, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I just want a nice decimal two for 2 minus 5 over E, right? So a decent decimal there. 2 minus 5 divided by e. About 1, so it's about, sorry, 1.60602791. Nice. So we want to see how good our series does with six terms, right? So we're integrating from 0 to 1 of x squared e to the minus x dx, which is the integral from 0 to 1. I forget already. Don't tell me. Yep. Negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 2, all over n factorial. Oops, forgot my series. Yeah. So I could have written out terms before, right? Might have needed seven, might have needed five, or no, I, I would need at least six. I might have needed seven, if you think about how something can disappear after you integrate or di differentiate, right? So I, I but I'm going to do it with the whole series first. So I get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. Oh my god, so many spam calls. Um, and when I'm integrating, I'm adding 1 and then multiple, and dividing by that new piece.
um, looking for nonsense terms. Yes. Oh, yes. Evaluated. Evaluated at zero and one. I'm I'm going to write out because I only asked for six terms. I'm going to write out the six terms and evaluate them. Right. Um. So. Uh, first term. Help me. <laughs> uh, X cubed. Over three. Agreed? Nice. So I, I kind of see uh, my pattern already, right? I, I, I can see my pattern already. After a couple terms, you really don't have to go back and think really anymore. I know I'm going to get an x to the 5 over 5 times 2 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 times 3 factorial plus x to the 7th over 7 times 4 factorial. One more term, right? That's nice because all I have to do is evaluate it at 1. When I evaluate at zero, it goes away, right? So it looks like one third minus one fourth uh, plus one tenth minus one thirty sixth Thank you, one six eight and Eight times one hundred twenty nine sixty. I'm not not asking you to do anything with this, just just give me the decimal now. All right. Oh, this is this was not one point, it was point one. Yeah, and this is point six oh four six six two six nine eight. I mean look uh two to three now. I mean, to three, it's pretty good, right? This is 1.6, 0 0.161, and this one is uh, 0 0.160. Pretty good, the three decimal places, just with six terms. Let me um, assign some problems to look at. Let me assign some problems to turn in, okay? So for Monday, right? So let me just try and uh, do a quick gathering of what I want to do. I will say it out loud, uh, but just give me a second. So in 7.1, I have like 1 to 9. Uh, let's let's do number f 
number five. And I'll write this down on the, on the board in a second. So 7.1, you're doing one to nine, you're gonna turn in number five. Uh, meaning, I mean, do you have to do one to nine? No, right? But you should think about, you should do a rough draft of all of them, the odds, because that's what you have the answers to, okay? Um, and if you're getting to where they're going, you, you know, finish it or not, it doesn't have to be perfect. And 7.2, and, and, but for number five, you should maybe rewrite it after you get it, right? Um, uh, 7.2, I certainly like number one. Oops, damn it. Number one to 23. Um, and let's hand in number 23. So 7.2, I like problems 1 to 23, you're going to hand in number 23. 7.3, I like uh, 1 to 25. Yeah, hand in number 11. Too easy, but so what? Uh, 7 3. For 8.6, I like 1 to 29. Hand in 11 and 13. No, sorry. Eleven, uh, 13 and 19. So one problem with an LN, one problem with an arctan. Is that really an arctan? No. That's okay. Just 13 there. Sorry, 8.6, number 13. I'm going to write all of this. 8.7. Uh, 1 to 11. Sorry, 1 to 10, 1 to 9 then. Do 5 and 7. Okay, let me write them down now. Uh, there's a, There was also a little... Side note that I wanted you to, if you do some power series problems, make sure you at least do one radius of convergence, right? Uh, and then do some of the wrapping with the multi-terms to see how it's fitting, that type of thing. Make sure you're comfortable with that. Okay, here's the whole thing. Uh, 7.1, 1 to 9, turn in number 5, right? 
So section problems homework. Monday, right? 7.2. Oh, Tuesday. Oh, 4th of July. Don't blow off your fingers. So six problems to turn in. It's not too bad. Nice. It's going to have a quiz, so I've got nothing left uh, prepped. Uh, but I will see you all. What's tomorrow? Wednesday?